you are the son of one of the most important musicians ever, not just one of the most important musicians out of South Africa, but just in the world. Uh, Hugh Masekela, he's a tremendous impact on the entire world, um, globally famous, even among white people during apartheid. Um, we share a connection in terms of Harry Belafonte was helpful to your father. And yeah. He's been helpful in my journey as an artist and an activist. He's been a great mentor. One of my favorite songs of all time, just whether or not I was going to interview or not, you were not as Mason Grenades. Mm. Like that song is just like, you know, fallout shelters cannot hide me from radiation smile. That's a bar. Yeah. That's a bar. Looks like it's safer to be in jail. I'm in jail in here. I'm in jail out there. I'm in jail in here. Yeah. Um, just talk to us a little bit about the relationship you have with that giant. Ah, man. You know, we are coming up on his on four years. It'll be four years, January 18th, mm -hmm. um, since we lost him. But I feel him with me more and more every day. The first year, I, I felt like I was just alone. Mm. And then I started to feel the downloads. And you you feel them, and it's like a wave of grief and then a wave of realization of like you can feel him texturally and how he's giving you these little moves and these hints. Mm. You know, growing up, my earliest memories of time with my father was in the club. Mm. My dad didn't, we weren't like at the park or whatever. We were yeah. in the club from like five, six years old. Mm. I was in... Mikel's and the Village Gate and the Bottom Line. My when my dad had in the me village. on Village, yeah, yeah, had me on the weekends. We hung out during the day and we'd go out for burgers or whatever and go hang out with his friends. And then we'd be, he'd be like, "Pack your stuff," and we went to the club. And I'd be there for both sets till three in the morning, hanging out and watching my father like hypnotize people. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know he was famous. I just knew that he was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I knew that. I, I, every time I went to see my father play, I was excited like it was the first time. I just, I studied him. You know, I studied his his storytelling and his ability to like kidnap your soul. Mm. And I didn't understand it at when I was very young, but I think probably around 15, 16, I understood, I began to understand why he was so relentless about... <clears throat> um, continuing to to evolve the same message about freeing South Africa. Yeah. And about liberation. And not just about like he obviously his story was apartheid. And, and he was a political exile for like 30, 30 years. 30 right? years. The man was homeless. Yeah. He didn't take citizenship or residence anywhere. He everyone offered it to him. You know, I felt like there was a bidding war between the UK and the <laughs> States being like, we'll take you, we'll take you. Here's right. what we'll give you, Hugh. And he was like I'm good, man, because this thing is gonna <laughs> this thing is gonna be over soon. I love how you channel him like that. I didn't even know that I could do it until I was doing it. Mm. My sister one day started crying. She was like, Don't ever let dad see that. <laughs> and then he saw it and he was like, he came to me one day, he's like, I'm hearing, man, that you do me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see it. Right. You look you look like him when you do it. It's like you do the face too. It's just like I said, man, it wow. just was years and years of studying him as a kid. But the thing that I loved about my 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 father is that wherever we went, I got to go on the road with him a lot. I was ended up being a, a roadie with him on the on the Graceland tour with Paul Simon, which was a whole crazy story, as well as his homecoming tour um, when he went back to South Africa in 1991. Um, but everywhere we went, my father the first first thing he would do was check in and see where the people were, mm -hmm. like whatever country, whatever city, we're going to eat there. He wanted to, to gain perspective on what their situation was and who was who who was being stepped on, and he made sure to speak for them mm -hmm. on stage anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the thing that I, I think that that as much as I loved everything about my father as an artist, where he got all of his material was was he, he was a champion of people in struggle. He just couldn't comprehend that one set of people wanted to 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 subject any others. That was something that he couldn't equate. Yeah. I'm glad you said all that because my daughter is here working with us and she's worked on the production side and she's an artist and she's an amazing artist, singer, songwriter, and when rapper. She, when I met her mm -hmm. before we it came on, she told me she was your daughter. I got chills. Oh. Because, because you understand that experience. Oh, and I, I, and I just, I, 
I can imagine what that is for you, but also for her. And it just took me back I, immediately. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, she um, has a song talking about how going on the road or seeing me perform, how it impacted her, mm. you know? And there's some parts of that song that are, that are hard to hear, mm. you know, because I'm not in her head. And it's just, that's always been a concern of mine. Like, how do I relate to their perspective when I've never lived that way? Yeah. It's not, it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. um, there were times where I didn't get to see my dad for, for long gaps. Mm -hmm. Also part of his, part of his being homeless um, and, and, and struggling and fighting that long um, meant that he was battling shit. You yeah. Know? Um, addiction being one of those things. Mm -hmm. And you don't realize what it is until you, until you realize what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was tough. It was really, yeah. really tough for us.